Okay, well, I am joined by Tanya Rivelis, David Chavitz, and Francine Krieg. Uh, so, hello, Tanya. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. Hi, David. Hi, Hi. Francine. Hello. All right, so um, just to give you a bit of context, uh, Tanya, David, and I have been having an ongoing conversation about NFTs for the last year or so. And Francine is back to talk about um um, her experiences with AI but we are all traditional painters we love traditional painting we love the craft of painting so let's just you know just want to get that get that clear first so we have AI questions which I mean David does AI work as well Tanya uses AI in her work I've experimented a little bit with it so I'm, we're all familiar with it but well, let's start off with the NFT questions um, this one is from Liam Coping in the UK, and he says, are NFTs the potential next, in inverted commas, cryptocurrency crash? Do you think NFTs have become more of a hindrance to digital artists struggling for their talents to be taken seriously? Go. <laughs> the question is to whom? To David and Tanya, right? Well, yes. well, no, you, anyone, anyone, any one of you can feel free because you're all involved I'm here in the NFTs. <laughs> no, no, feel I, I free. Say, uh, I would say no, yes, not at all. Um, in fact, so, like quite the opposite. I mean, I could think of no better if I was a just a digital artist. I would think of no better, you know, blessing than to have NFTs come along to have the ability to sell my own sell the quote originals of my work um, instead of just working for clients um, I think this is an amazing opportunity for digital creators so I I guess I would say no and what about this uh, digital crash thing that he's talking about is that for real what do you well, mean oh, sorry it seems pretty that to me <laughs> Um, well, he says, uh, are NFTs the potential next cryptocurrency crash? Well, the, the NFTs, you know, are tied with cryptocurrency to some extent. and But uh, cryptocurrency is still here and it just goes up and down in waves. And um, I think the advantage NFTs um, have over cryptocurrency is that it's more than currency. It's at least for in our circle, it's art. Um, so regardless of what happens with crypto, the art's still there. So I, I don't think it's really uh, in danger, really. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would agree with David. And I would also add, if you just look at news, if you check everyday news, but in, in global sense, I mean, like if you check the economy news and all that, you will see how big companies like i mean really big companies are going to uh crypto and using crypto and in um, using that technology and investing that technology and i think that's a clear answer that it's not going to be you know like a just a bubble or something because two serious companies are in, uh, starting to be involved in that so I think it's it's a good sign just to see the news in in general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's as you said, Francine. It's a bit slow at the moment. It's been a bit slow for the last couple of months, but I think it's picking up a little bit. I've felt like it's picked up a little bit. Anyone agree? Just in the last week. <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Sure. I didn't. I didn't. Say yeah, that. I would say so. Um, everybody keeps saying that it will uh, come back again. It'll be stronger again. So just I, I'm just a little bit more um, in the background with the NFT at the moment, uh, more busy with painting, and I'm just waiting for the market to uh, to get back, and I will uh, then offer more NFTs. But for, for the moment, I'm uh, keeping more silent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also nice, nice time, you know, just to focus on your on working. On something instead of you know pushing your sales and everything it just gives you time actually to work because exactly. i remember when nft uh had that blast and everyone was just sitting on 
three or like 24 seven yeah, yeah. and you just yeah. I, I remember I couldn't even paint because I yeah. was so so into Twitter and promoting and talking and spaces exactly. and everything so you can God, spend, you can spend all busy. day it's uh, yeah. yeah it is it gives time yeah. to breathe again and to focus I, I have missed that a lot uh, last year to be honest I was yeah. like you said too, I was too much on Twitter too much uh, you know all the time uh, no, it's it's never ending on Twitter. You post something and you're checking and uh, reacting, True. and uh, it's uh, it's addictive. Uh, I yeah. found yeah. more more peace inside now, and I I realize and, what what is important as an that's artist. True. Yeah, and funny course, fact yeah. actually, since uh, since like NFT start being a little bit you know like quiet and everything, I start paying a lot. And if you yeah. compare these couple of months comparing to that NFT blast and everything, I created more art than before when I was in <laughs> NFT, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I was just on Twitter on for the first spaces and yeah. So I'm happy there is some, you know, like yeah. quiet time to create, actually. Yeah. You should uh, limit it, say only one hour per day or something in the evening uh, <laughs> when you're too tired to paint. Uh, maybe th maybe that will work because I do like uh, the contact. You know, it's still it's a lonely profession, uh, alone in my studio, and it's, uh, it's a way to be in contact. Uh, so this yeah, this is true. still for me the most important part of the whole uh, NFT and AI uh, scene. The feeling of being yeah. a part of something. It's very nice. It's a it's tricky really balance. It's very yeah, tricky absolutely. balance because it does seem that you know with with NFT sales, it does seem pretty directly correlated to how much effort you put into engaging in the yeah. community. So it's, it's, it's hard <laughs> to, to figure out what hard. that balance is, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very true. Uh, yeah. It, as long as it's not your main income, then, uh, then it doesn't really matter. I, I'm right. happy. Uh, so for a lot of digital artists, maybe it's more important, but for me, uh, sure, yeah. you know, it's, it's something extra. So. The the, yeah. the sales are for me, and to be honest, not that important. It's, it's it's nice, but I just put it on my ledger. I don't even know what is on it. I don't want to know <laughs> the value at the moment because it's uh, like one third of what it was in the beginning. Don't even check that. <laughs> no, I'm not checking. I'm not checking the. Um, David and Tanya, tell me about your this drop that um, you were involved in with Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York which I had a little space for mm -hmm. the weekend, um, but it's an interesting drop. So yeah, one of you jump in. <laughs> David is looking at me. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> me, me. So as I understood, that was first time when a member of the royal family was uh, in NFT, uh, right, David? So that's a, actually like a unique drop because that's... Uh, um, from, goes from the member of the royal family. So uh, Lawrence has always was epic with all his ideas and poetry and, you know, gathering all that uh, artists together and creating this uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful art. And um, yeah, so it was on Nifty Getaway and it was like editions, uh, open editions, and then um you could even get the physical but we didn't get that high bits to get uh to give the physical um what else what else david <laughs> tell us <laughs> um yeah yeah there were what uh there was one there was the one of one which was like the whole thing put together and that all right um went to a great collector um so that was really exciting and then you know what five editions of each of the different chapters um <clears throat> uh like one with painting with my paintings one with jenny jenny's paintings one with tanya's painting one with matthias painting and uh and then um lawrence and matthias you know like melded them all together and made them transition and with ai art in the background and stuff like that and um tanya did some animating on hers as well um yeah um, it was really cool. So all the editions, I think, were sold, and then also some yeah. commemorative open edition uh, posters. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And the, the the poetry piece by Sarah 
was Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess, <laughs> was really good. I mean, like, I was really impressed. It was really, really a beautiful um, piece of poetry. Um, yeah. So, and I, yeah. I should also add, you know, I was a little bit nervous when we had the space. Um, and I was first time in space uh, with, you know, like uh, some royal person or, you know, and I, I thought it will be like a little bit uncomfortable because she would be, you know, how you imagine the royal people. <laughs> um, but she was so, so, you know, like relaxed. She was joking. She said so many compliments to artists. She was so nice, like personality, you know, her personality was so cool and I felt that you know I felt very comfortable and yeah so almost like a very real good. person huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it was a nice bit of activity in a as I say a sort of a quiet kind of period um yeah definitely I completely yeah. missed uh, the drop uh, I saw the announcements but I, I didn't see the works I must have oh. uh, been sleeping. <laughs> that happens when you're less time on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. By the way, they weren't it's... the actual works themselves weren't that easy to see. You had to go to the website, onto the Nifty Gateway, oh, and yeah. actually see them. It wasn't like people were posting the the little animations on Twitter. Not that I could see anyway. Okay. Yeah, and actually back to AI uh, subject. It was funny because our all collab started with AI references, and now all our ideas was around AI. Uh, so that's how it started, actually. Like we we collected references created in AI, and then oh, okay. you know started involving everything and uh, <laughs> thinking about it. But just back to AI subject. Yeah, I, I didn't worry. know that you were also into uh, AI, uh, Tanya. I, I, I oh, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I thought you were no, really but... stick to the painting only. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. But I started using AI, not like directly using it, but I create uh, AI like references for my future oh, yeah. paintings, you okay. know, so it really helps me. For example, the latest yeah. paintings with all that yellow codes, flying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and so everything. That was from AI? Yeah, that's what, wow. and I, I, I mean, like, how can I create it by making photos, for example, like what kind of wind do I need? Like what kind of storm do I need to create yeah, yeah. that flowing where, moment? Where to and... find the handsome guys? <laughs> where to find these handsome guys? <laughs> it's like almost uh, too handsome, no? Yeah. It's not reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yes. but in a nice so, way, of course. In, in your, I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, so yes, but it's such an amazing okay. tool. I mean, I oh. definitely will use it. Uh, I will continue using it. Okay, uh, John, we jumped from the subject. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, Stephen Cavallo on Instagram says, I've been uh, contacted twice on Instagram by people interested in buying my art as NFTs. I didn't follow through with either as it seemed to be a scam in both cases. They both provided links where I could get the NFTs done, and uh, uh, but avoided uh, simple questions. The price offered was very high, um, $3,500 per piece by one and $8,000 by another. Um, how would a normal deal work with someone interested uh, in artists' work as NFTs? David? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll just say it's a scam. It, yeah. They're it's they're all yeah, scams it's a scam for sure. Uh, so uh... <laughs> yeah, they're all scams. No one's going to come to you. No one's going to take the time to come to you to pay for your work that has been untested in the NFT market for like you know they're not gonna. I mean that's just not gonna happen. So um, True. don't answer any of those messages it's not worth it but you should you know enter nfts on your own and start to build up a, a foundation there so yeah what is the yeah, scam definitely. what are they trying to do are they trying to get the copyright for the image or what is the deal i like i've I think never they're trying to connect I, I, yeah go on yeah i think sometimes they're just trying to connect get your get you to connect your wallet with something and then they can drain your wallet um, that's probably the most yeah. common thing but yeah. But surely, like most of the people they get in touch with, they haven't got a wallet, they haven't got a clue, and, they're, and the their way they're approaching them as, oh, I'll navigate the NFT space for you. You know, like I yeah. think the, the sort of scam you're talking about, David, is more on Twitter, you know, where, where you already got a wallet and they want to just get you to, you know, 
um, blindly give them the address to your wallet or some way to get into your wallet and then you, they just empty it. But this seems different, you know, and it, it seems like I can't, I, I know it's a scam. You can just tell, you know, it's like the, yeah. my wife, well, I found my wife's, well, on, my wife was looking at your website on her browser. I thought I'd get her a present, you know, this one, God, I've had so many of them. Um, but I can't, I don't know what they're trying to get with this one. Like for yeah. people who have, oh, Tanya does, all right, Tanya's gone. <laughs> Crazy here, yeah. I just, I just talked with an artist a few days ago and she told me that they send you to some platform which you don't know like it's new platform and to mean something there you have to put money so i guess that's oh, about yeah. all this little like 200 or something like a fee so yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what correct. they right it's like true that. yeah yeah i had this one time because i was also curious what is the catch here and it's yeah. exactly what you said the minting costs were extremely high and i knew at that moment the minting costs were like ten dollars or something very low so could could not be 200. And so yeah. I asked the question and uh, well, of course, yeah. disappeared. So, that's so the if you yeah. yeah, if you're listening, it's a scam. They're all scams. And if you're not sure, you can direct message any one of us and we'll tell you it, it's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> we will tell you, we will buy your NFT. <laughs> yeah, wow. But they should think of better. They should have think of better stories to tell, and that it's more yes. believable. Because it's so, like uh, today also someone said eight thousand dollars for an NFT, and the, really? they're sending the pictures, even of a detail of a painting. Do not even take the time to really, you know, try their best, be convincing. That's so disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these scammers, these scammers, the these, scammers are, yeah. these scammers just have no creativity exactly. and no perseverance. Should, uh, yeah, it's just AI a, for it. Maybe AI has a solution. Well, that's a very story. nice. <laughs> that's a great segue. Right, we're into the AI questions now. Hang on, let me get them up. Um, okay, so Silas Nigel on Twitter says, "What inspired Francine to begin with AI artworks?" And also, what does she feel when she completes an AI work versus when she completes uh, a painting on a canvas? Yeah, well, you know, it started out of uh, frustration and anger. When I first saw the AI, I thought, what the hell is this? And um, it looked very easy and uh, people were asking a lot of money for it. And suddenly everybody was an artist. And that was a little bit uh, frustrating for me. I was complaining to a colleague of mine, like uh, on a daily basis, we were talking with each other and uh, expressing our, our, our anger and frustration. But, you know, I, I thought, how can I have an opinion about something if I haven't tried it? That is always how I look at things. So I started to explore it. And to be honest, it's such a joy to do it. Uh, it is addictive. It is um, maybe in an unhealthy way, even like really addictive keep keep uh, changing the prompts like oh, maybe if I add the word there maybe you know you want to have better 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 and um yeah so it's slowly changed in the beginning i thought i only want to mint pieces uh, where i add the prompts so you, you can see my the first pieces that are minted of my ai actually i put the prompts in the description uh, to show how easy it is that was in the beginning my goal with ai but then I, I really, uh, you know, started enjoying and um, my, my perception of AI changed going along the way, uh, thinking, uh, looking at it like it, it is art. But yeah, the, like Silas is asking the difference with the feeling of uh, making a painting um, compared to AI, you cannot compare it at all. You know, a painting is like my baby, it's like something that I put my heart and soul into it is a longer process the whole thing so it gives so much more satisfaction when I uh, decide the painting is finished and I can look at it with pride and uh, it's mine and uh, AI is not mine it, it's I keep having that like the feeling okay I put the words in so I made it but it's not it's not my work so that is the biggest difference for me Right. What about you, David? Because you do, you've done, you do quite a bit of AI work as well. Is there a big difference between finishing one and the other? 
yeah it uh it depends i've done different kinds of ai work some just um very um close to the original output and then some that took extensive um time in the digital process afterwards so for the first my first ai stuff was you know i i used runway ml to train a model off hundreds of my paintings and then generated images from there and like would take four interesting ones and then mask them together on photoshop and then and then also started to paint on them and procreate so it was pretty involved process it was like a you know very is it was exciting because it was based on my paintings um and then and then the ai did its thing and i would select from the ai it was like very collaborative with the ai and then i would take those yeah. and use digital you know processes so in for those ones it, it it felt you know it felt very much like mine um because it was not recognizable from the outputs and even the outputs themselves were based on my paintings. So, um, but then I've done other AI work that where I'm, you know, with mid journey using prompts and um, a couple of them, I did some digital alterations afterwards, but not as in depth as those, those ones that were based um, on my paintings. So um, it's a whole range. And I think there's room, there's room here for the whole range, you know, what I love about how Francine is, is doing is like, I mean, for you, it, it, it's not as, you know, satisfying or deep at, or deeply connected to you as your paintings. And yet you, the way you've selected them and produced them, they're very much yours. I, in my opinion, because they, they reflect your, the theme of your work and your aesthetic comes through completely. I mean, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm is so, happy so to interesting hear this, to me. That's, yeah, yeah. It's so, well, it's, it's so fascinating to me that, like, you know, um, you know, people perceive AI art as very well easy or artificial, or anyone can do it. But if that's the case, then how come your work is so your AI work is so consistent with your oil work? That's just that's just so cool. I mean, so there's clearly a huge a huge human, obviously a huge human element in, in AI work, uh, no matter how much post um, processing or, you know, um, work you do after the output. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's really interesting. Yeah, of course. I think, uh, yes. So the question is who made it? That is, everybody's asking this all the time. Uh, you know, if, someone else using the same prompts as I did, there will be a different outcome anyway. So yeah. none of the works can be the same. Uh, and exactly. yeah, I, I decide what words to put in and I decide from the hundreds of images that come out, which I think that is art. So I, I feel very double still about uh, AI. It's, um, I, I can understand a lot of artists being so angry about it because it's also I funny know. the difference on Twitter. People are so you know positive and uh, so kind to each other. And then on Instagram, I think this um, probably has to do with the, the people I'm connected to, with more the traditional art world. And there it's, it's not so much space yet uh, for this new development. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so let's get on. Let's go on opinions. with the questions, and you'll see what what we're, uh, Francine is talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next few questions are from Skip Rode on Patreon. Thanks for the tea, Skip. Uh, Francine, this is uh, Skip here. Francine, your AI style matches your painting style. How did you get AI to be an extension of your own work? Did you train your AI to use your own paintings? Do you use several AI platforms or just one? Have you seen differences in how the AI systems respond to your inputs or are they all pretty much the same? And do you think that AI systems are better for different types of art making? Do you think different types of AI systems are better for different types of um, uh, art making? Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm, so I'm trying the journey, the dull A and the stable diffusion. Uh, but only the stable diffusion allows nudity. And for me, the nudity is uh, an important part of uh, my, uh, my work uh, to show the fragility of the human body that is uh, important. And so the mid journey already is not an option for me. And I think 
I, I was I never succeeded to use my journey in a way that for me it was satisfying uh, the outcome. It was always a little bit like too much fairy tale vibe. Uh, I, I can recognize the images made with um, uh, Mid Journey uh, compared to Dal A or Stable Diffusion. It's, it's different style, I think. But it's amazing what it can do. But um, yeah, so I'm not, I, I did not train any models yet uh, because I, I'm not so technical. I am using one a type of CoLab notebook with the Stable Diffusion. I'm happy it's still working because uh, I, I am totally not a technical uh, nerd. Uh, so I keep using it in the same way, only with uh, just prompts. Uh, and I keep looking for new prompts. But that's my only. But of course, sometimes I'm uh, putting it first through uh, Mid Journey because there you can you can mix some images and then you have another image and you can put again in the stable diffusion. So I do uh, experiments with different programs, but the one that I like the most uh, is still the stable diffusion. It's just the best. And I try right. to use my in my paintings as initial uh, image, but I I don't like it. But I do use the photos I made of my models. I, I put as uh, initial image, stable diffusion, and you make all kinds of variations. And um, I'm, I'm using that now also for my painting. Uh, if I'm a little stuck or I don't know what to um, what to do with a with a photo, maybe the background. I have no clue what to do with the background. I use my you know my my friend AI to come up uh, with good ideas. Um, to have some some interesting background or or just give me new uh, ideas, open my mind. It um, it's very refreshing. Sometimes he comes with ideas that I haven't thought of myself. Uh, yeah, so that is what I like about uh, using AI now in my painting uh, uh, work. And uh, it's a gender. I hear you referring to him as he. It's a it's a man, is it? Uh, who is a he? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was not aware, but uh, yeah, apparently it's a heat. <laughs> Very good. And what about you, David and Tanya? What, what platforms are you using and do you find some are better for some things and, you know, and other things? I am. Um, I started with uh, um, the one I settled on early was Runway ML um, because that allowed me to train the model. Um, but I've reached a point where I feel like that technology, at least with the model I trained, wasn't, it's not quite there. It's like, it's not satisfying what I want to do. And, um, but I've been using mid journey a lot too. And just recently, actually, I'm pretty excited. Like, um, and you might try this Francine, the idea, um, there's a new feature on uh, mid journey, which is uh, slash uh, blend. And you can, you can blend your paintings together. Like, you can do like a, be, between two to five different images and it will try to blend them together. It will come up with a painting that is the like blending of these. Oh, wow. It's so cool. Like I, and just last night, like I was, I was just, I was just uh, working on it for hours and I was pretty impressed. Some of the uh, outputs, I was like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. I, because I want to use, you know, my own paintings to create new, paintings you know um but in a very um I, I don't know refined way in a sophisticated way like the way with the runway mm -hmm. ml was it didn't look right it was a very or very primitive but this is it's getting really advanced um and i've been pleased please but you mean that. that you have so, to upload the url of uh of an image and you put these urls below each other this is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've yeah. done that. Yeah, I've done that too. I've done that too. They made it easier though with the with the slash blend. They made it easier, so you just you ah, know you can okay. um you just do the slash blend and it has an image. You just click on it, select your image, boom, select your image. So you don't have to do the uploads or anything. Oh, okay. It's just like okay. you go through your oh, catalog of nice. images and experiment really quickly. Oh, um, nice, but but I thought it awesome. was already. They made it already so easy. I thought. Just putting the URL it's easier there. now, <laughs> yeah. it's easier and that's now. mid journey. That's mid journey. Yeah, yeah. mid journey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm Very gonna good. try that for sure. Yeah. You you've been yeah, using mid journey as well, fun. Tanya, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm using. I I I started with Dali, but it was so weird. Like, <laughs> you know, even in mid journey, you still have like eight fingers, 
sometimes I somewhere over here, <laughs> you know, like all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but one 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 guy told me um, he he helped me a lot with you know like understanding how it all works and what prompt you need to write and like when you write like slash slash or like minus minus no and then you uh, how you say exclude like the features that you don't want I didn't know all that you know tips and things so it was nice he helped me so I start uh, getting five fingers instead of eight. Or like maybe four, you know, like it depends on how lucky I am. But yeah, I'm using Mid Journey right now, and uh, so much fun. I, I'm using the paid version, uh, so I have the private window, which is cool. You know, nobody can see my my weird fantasies. <laughs> yeah. um, so, c can you do uh, nudity on the paid version? No, I tried, but I think no. I no. once tried the guy. He he had just the guy. He had just no no t shirt. I mean, like that's only the torso. So no, no, like. No. But maybe his nipple or something. <laughs> At mid journey, no. You Set off the alarms. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get nipple punished alarm. directly. It's with yeah. runway the same. I was trying <laughs> runway also. No nudity and really in such a strict way. So frustrating. Yeah, like no nipples. Yeah. No nipples. <laughs> Not even a shoulder. <laughs> All right, Kat, uh, Kate Van Doren on Patreon again. Thanks for the tea, Kate. Says, hi, John. Thank you for all you do for the artistic community. I listen to you every week in my studio, and I'm just so grateful. You're welcome, Kate. Uh, for Francine. Hi, Francine. I love your work and now the direction you're uh, taking with AI. Can you describe your feeling about the process of creating with AIs versus when you paint? Um, both will put you in a flow mode, but I'm wondering if there's a different excitement or what do you notice for yourself in the presence of creating, especially because of the immediacy of creating through AI versus paint. Also, uh, are you planning to paint your AI images or strictly keep digital? Thank you again. I love your work. So you've talked about it a bit already, Francine, but is there anything else yeah. that you want to add to that? Well, you know, the whole uh, uh, making AI is sitting behind the, the computer screen. And I, I find that um, very boring and I'm getting a little stiff <laughs> by sitting all day. <laughs> I, I do uh, really enjoy the movement of standing. I'm always standing when I paint and, uh, you know, with my stretched arm. Uh, it's more active. Uh, it gives that, that gives also energy. So sometimes I find it... Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'd say, making a little bit feeling like an old woman <laughs> end of the day. <laughs> well, uh, let me see. What was the other question? Um, are, are you planning on painting your AI images or strictly oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it digital? Yeah, no, I, I have been doing that from the beginning. I have been doing both, I'm making AI, and then sometimes I'm using the output as a reference for my painting work. But, you know, that has been like struggling last month. Uh, deciding uh, do I want to continue because of course the reference is different material as when I make a photo myself and for me it was much harder to really um, feel motivated and put my really want to set my teeth into it I didn't feel the connection so much uh, but I thought you know it has so much potential so I did I did really tried uh, a, a lot last month to make to make it work and I had a few paintings that I look back, I think, well, those were okay, you know. But to be honest, um, I'm not, I'm not going that direction. Uh, I think I can, I can use it like I was talking before to uh, maybe um, make another background or think of maybe some small adjustments. I put it through the AI to see what he come up with. He, <laughs> uh, uh, but but to really use the all the whole the image of AI as a reference for my for my painting work, it's too distant from uh, from me. It's too much disconnected. Well, that's at least that is how it works for me. So yeah. Yeah, I think you were saying in a space, Tanya, that you had the same trouble or, sim or a different kind of trouble with using AI generated reference images. What were you saying? They felt like they had no bones or no structure, yeah, underlying yeah. structure. Yeah. It it yeah, actually yeah. happened with last uh the previous collab that we had with Duchess of York. And uh that was my first idea. I will just, you know, create a reference 
um, and then just paint from it, you know, but it didn't work because when I said it looks normal when you look at it, it, look, it looks like a human. But when you start painting, you just realize that anatomy is wrong. Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. eyes probably sitting not in mm -hmm. that place which is true. You know, like yeah. when you paint, you you do like a sculpture with your brush, and when you create the sculpture, you just realizing that something on wrong position, and at the end the painting was ugly. Actually, I had to do another one from like real human or at least you know references from real people. So yeah, it didn't work like that first. Yeah. So I understand what Francine says. Yeah. It, it, it kind of like, you, you still need to work on it. You still need to finish yeah. it with your own fingers and hands and eyes and brain and whatever you use. <laughs> when you paint. Heart. A heart. Yeah, yeah, heart. heart. Oh, yeah, that was the word. That was the word. Yeah. <laughs> you do, you do work from the heart. That's an important factor. That's what the now reason why many people have fear for the AI, I think, because they think it's not made with the heart. Yeah. 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 You were nodding your head furiously there, David. Have you had the same kind of issues with using reference? <clears throat> no, but I've noticed that um, for for uh, figures and faces, it's not quite up to it's not in terms of well, because I think AI is an amazing opportunity for artists to have reference. But but right now at this point the figures aren't good enough, like yeah. like they're saying like they're just off. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> um, but but what I found is that well because two recent paintings I just finished, um, I I use the AI for the background for the reference, yeah. but I I use real figure reference for the figure, and so for background it's amazing. I love it. It's so it's so much fun. Like whatever you can imagine you yeah. can now have reference to get you started on it to inspire you um so i think it's amazing and but yeah, and I, eventually it will catch up with figure and stuff yeah it's, i use for for closes so i really love how it creates all the design all the flowing moments of closes that you can't even make the photo of it so i i definitely love how it creates the closes fabrics and all that yeah, what you were saying there about the uh, figures not feeling like they have any substance under them reminded me of this, you know, this kind of thing that's going on at the moment about Nick Cave, you know, the um, singer, Nick Cave. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody I asked chat, chat APT to chat. Is it APT or GPT? I can't remember. Chat GPT. G you know the, GPT. GPT, yeah. Somebody asked chat GPT to write the lyrics for a song in the style of Nick Cave. This is a fan of Nick Cave's and then they sent it to Nick Cave and he... Um, um was very upset like and just saying oh this is what you're saying yeah. no heart no so that's not the thing that I though i was listening to to as uh, um some somebody talking about that and they are from dublin so and very like down to earth and they were saying well i don't know why they're calling it uh or i don't call it artificial intelligence i call it superficial intelligence which i thought was <laughs> Beautiful. It was just, <laughs> it was a lovely way of describing it because what you're talking about, about having uh, no bones in the, in the models and the figures is, is kind of that. Is it like, it's a superficial representation of yeah. maybe what it looks like. It's so funny, uh, Tanya, you keep dipping down at a shot and you're appearing again, like, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like you're on a trampoline or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, well, let's press on with the questions. Um, this one is from Alex Kelly on Patreon. Thanks for the tea, Alex. And it says, putting aside questions about whether AI image is, a, sorry, putting aside questions about whether an AI image, uh, oh my God. Putting aside <laughs> questions about whether AI image generation is art, uh, which has been and probably will be debated endlessly, what are Francine's thoughts on how AI can be used as a tool for the traditional artist without falling foul of its drawbacks? And also, in Francine's personal experience, what are the drawbacks of using AI in her traditional artistic practice? The drawbacks. I didn't. I get. I didn't get that sentence. Uh, the first question, and then the second part. I didn't. Uh, I don't understand that. But it's in simple uh, language. <laughs> 
Um, okay, well, he was sort of saying about whether AI image generation is actually art or not. And he wasn't, he wasn't yeah. saying, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but w- what are your thoughts on how AI can be used as a tool for traditional artists without falling foul of its drawbacks? And then what are the drawbacks in your drawbacks. experience? Like the negative side, you mean the drawbacks? Y- yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think you were saying somewhere... And uh, maybe just in a text, you were saying that you had to stop using the AI for a while because it was affecting your painting. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That That's why uh, in the new year, I had a new year resolution saying, um, actually, I said no AI. I didn't hold on to that resolution because I, I did do some AI work. But um, since I started AI work, I started feeling very insecure about my painting work because... I don't know how uh, David and Tanya feel this, but I feel like you generating like uh, hundreds of sort of small masterpieces uh, every day. It's And that was sometimes too overwhelming for me. And um, I just noticed that my painting work was suffering from that a lot. Uh, what I had been making last month is not uh, what I'm used to from myself. Uh, I can do better. <laughs> and it all had to do that I lost my mojo. I don't know how else to put it, but I felt like really I lost my my confidence. And um, so I thought, you know, I just have to uh, stop the stop this AI stuff because it's uh, it's not a good influence. So that is the, the, the drawback, I, I think, that for me it was uh, not a good combination. And maybe it's, it's better to be like full-time AI uh, artist, um, you know, if it's about the output. But now I want to use it like more part as, as uh, part of the reference, like David also was talking about, like using it yeah. for the background. And, and maybe mm-hmm. now and then there there is an, an, out, uh, an output that I think is good enough to use as reference for a painting. But I don't think I will do that many times, maybe a few times a year. But for now, um, I think the nicest way to use it as a traditional painter is to give it, to give ideas, to to, um, to open your mind to uh, what you can do with your own, if you're making your own uh, photos of models, for example, that yeah. you can have like a different uh, idea about it. I was sometimes a little stuck in the way I approach a model. And the way I painted it was always very simple. I always was a bit clueless, to be honest, what to do with the background. Uh, and in, in this, I think it can be really, for me, uh, something extra that can uh, help me uh, to improve my painting. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Yeah, that, that thing about um, how it, it uh, undermines your confidence, that really reminds me of this idea of content, you know, where people are caught in a treadmill of having to produce content, like whether they're video creators or even Instagram or, you know, rather than making something, one thing that's fantastic, it's like, oh, I've got to get it out, got to get it out. doesn't matter what it is, just keep pushing it out, you know. It sort of sounds yeah, a little bit yeah. like that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I think uh, it's it's time to really, you know, focus on a painting and uh, put much more time in it. <laughs> yeah. That is uh, what was lacking a little bit. I did I didn't have time because I was all the time on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So less um, time on Twitter and more painting. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of context for the next question, um, when I was posting on Instagram to let everybody know that Francine was going to be coming on to talk about uh, her experience with AI, I posted one of her her uh, AI mm-hmm. images, and it's an image with, on a, a green background, uh, um, an older woman, and then there's some sort of flowers in the area, in the air around her. And um, Michael Van Ziel in Chicago says, this is way too close in composition to the work I've been doing for 11 years. Okay, so I went and had a look at his work. And yeah, it's very similar. I'm I'm looking at a picture of a uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll I'll stick it up on the on the the screen, you know, a green background, um, a woman in profile with flowers in the air. Okay, so Francine um, responded. I don't know whether this was a good idea to get into it or not, but anyway, everyone <laughs> handles these things different. So Francine, say, Francine says, the theme of women and flowers goes way back in art history. 
um, and I've also been painting them a lot. And then Michael comes back pretty much straight away with, I agree, it's not a new theme. And when I started painting that theme, I tried to make my series different um, as well. I grew all the, re the real flowers in my own garden and made the flowers floating and not attached to anything. I spent hours pacing them, spacing them to make an interesting wave-like motion for the composition. My favorite color combination was aqua green background with pinkish flowers. And I also, I almost always painted the model in profile and I hired and paid all of my models. So here's my question. Why are you selling them? He's talking to Francine here. Why are you selling your AI paintings? Yeah. And how do you feel they are yours to sell? Yeah. Now, I'm. there was more to this conversation, but yeah, it yeah. got into iced tea and it, it got very complicated. And, vanilla you know, ice. I was, vanilla he was ice, yeah. Me, if I was called, he was called, and, and I asked him, I didn't get, did you get it? What he meant with vanilla ice? Because I think vanilla ice was pretty successful. Uh, I I don't know. I didn't I didn't feel strongly enough to research it, but my guess is yeah. that uh, Vanilla Ice possibly sampled something and said uh, it's fair use, and then was brought to court and possibly lost the court case. But that's complete supposition on my part. Yeah. Well, you know, it was it was not the only angry reaction on Instagram. It was from other people also asking, uh, you know, who says it is yours? Uh, very How much dare you the, sell them? How dare I? And I re responded something like, well, you know why I sell them? Because, you know, there's a market for it. And of course, that was so unethical. That didn't go say. down well. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, what can I say? Um, I, I, I am a little bit lost for words. I was, you know, a little bit in shock with all the, the anger and the aggression and the negativity. But Well, you can understand, can't you? Should, because the shocked. guy grew the flowers in his garden. I mean, like... Of you and couldn't get more models. pure yeah. you couldn't get more purist than i grew yeah, the yeah, actual yeah. flowers in my garden i paid the models i mean he, well, i no. totally get why he's upset i i get why artists are upset in general because uh, especially a, a bunch of artists who have like very clear signature and if you see your work uh, appearing in ai work uh, you think well i you know i was struggling for for 20 years uh, to, to find my own style and and my technique and now someone is making that in five minutes. Of course, that is upsetting. But I think, you know, it is it is a development. I have to say that I don't, I do agree that there should be uh, something changed uh, to put uh, the right into the hand of the artist saying, I want to be included in the, um, you know, in this list of artists that can be used as style. That I think it's, it is a fair, it's fair to deal uh, with that that way um yeah but to be honest i i did not see that much uh, ai art that i could really recognize like the work from an artist it's always blended together with many other styles and you know yeah. they always come up with a couple of uh, very recognizable styles like uh, norman uh, rockwell for example yeah or Van Gogh. Okay. you know if you say the data set is much bigger for them yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, there's uh, a lot of his work on the internet. And so if you use his name as a prompt, it will react in a very strong way. But uh, I think it's mostly so I'm, I'm using some like old masters uh, as prompts. Uh, yeah, but, but if, if not... you put if you put in uh, do it in the style of John Dalton, you won't get any it won't be any different at all. Because exactly. It's tiny. I was trying <laughs> John Dalton and nothing. <laughs> Um, I was also trying my own name. It's also nothing uh, yeah, coming. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not afraid if people, uh, one day maybe uh, someone will use my name. Uh, it will not co have a very strong reaction as a prompt, I, I think, because uh, I'm not so much on the internet compared to, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Sargent or Ilya uh, Pen or just to name a few or Rembrandt. Yeah. Uh, but if it, if it will happen, you know, it will not be my painting because my painting, you know, it's standing here. It's three dimensional. You have like the the the, the structure of the paint. It's a, a completely different experience than a dit digital uh, work on the screen. Uh, so right. we cannot compare these two things. Uh, also, the knowledge that one thing was made with the AI and the other thing was made with the brush. Uh, as long as that stays clear. For the audience that there is a difference they will judge it in a different way yeah i think yeah, yeah.
David, you look like you want to say something. Oh man, I mean that whole comment just baffled <laughs> baffled me on so many <laughs> so many levels. I mean, well, like I mean, I think in a way AI is doing exactly what human artists do, which is you you know as an artist you as you're training to be an artist you're looking at paintings that you like you're looking at artists that you like you have your favorite artists you internalize those images and eventually from those images and all your past experiences you're trying to make something that pleases you and that in a way imitates those images because that's what you like like i can't name like when when i was first starting to learn to paint my favorite artist was david lafell who's amazing still life painter and but I can't even count the number of successful LaFell imitators there are out there. But that's fine. Like, they, they like the style. It's a beautiful style. Um, but there's no one accusing them of, like, you know, cheating. <laughs> and exactly. so, like, AI is doing the exact same thing, just on, like, a larger scale. Um, so yeah. I think it's just the wrong way, wrong way to, to, to look at the whole, the whole thing. And then with the making money part of it, it, it's like I can't think of another profession where 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 um, we criticize um, the ability to make money like like we're not looking at you know people on Wall Street people on doctor or pe people who are doctors or lawyers and being like you shouldn't be making you know like why are you making money that's like a, a shameful practice you know um, stop making so much money but like if an artist tries to make money artists perpetuate this by being like because whether it's because of jealousy or, or insecurity or whatever like you you shouldn't be able to make money off your art unless it's torture you know it's got to be painful <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely it's, it's a weird it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a weird double standard and I, I can't stand it like i mean if 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 experimenting in AI art and it's something that genuinely, uh, genuinely interests you is, is a way for you to make a little extra income. Amazing. That can help feed your painting practice and, and whatever else. I mean, artists are terrible business people usually, but it's refreshing <laughs> to see people who aren't terrible business people like Francine. It's that it's so great that you can have these multiple, styles multiple mediums and be making income from them um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. rant maybe that's very shameful maybe, that you um, want to make money yeah. yeah that's true um by the way i wanted to add just that um you know if you think about probably the most unique art we ever create and i mean like we is humans it was in caves you know the drawings from the caves because after that, everything we create after that, probably it's already, you know, like a mix of something you saw before and mix of something. And like, if you think about it, like our brain is like made of like system of memories, even with like, so for, for a second or something, we actually kind of like AI, we have all that images in our head. So whenever we create something, it's actually we create based you know, like all that images based on previous experience, previous yeah. images we saw, some memories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, I think artists are a little bit angry with AI because they think that you don't spend money, uh, spend time. Sorry about <laughs> money. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like that artists don't spend time on it as artists should. You know, you're not struggling. You're not like you know, dirty in all that paints feeling cold like me look at me I'm like an onion in my studio <laughs> you know like when you don't do that when you don't struggle when you're not hungry or sleepy or you know like have a headache or something it doesn't you know mean anything so oh, and yeah. AI is like you know Francine or David you know that you're just sitting on computer you use like you probably have a cup of coffee with you you enjoy the process right it doesn't look no. like struggling what artists should do like artists should struggle and die poor and whatever like you know so yeah but even even with point. even with painting sometimes it can go effortless you know so then it, yes. it cannot be a, it cannot be a good painting then i think yes, because of definitely. all the experience sometimes you just can make in a few hours you make something and, and you can sell it 
for just uh, the same amount as paying that to be one month. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so experience that you take with you, why it's, why you are uh, can make it in a short time. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I I love the idea that you should make like if you can't make this scene your uh, like if it's an envy, make it uh, not your envy but your friend. Like make make a friend from your things that you don't understand or like you know something that you how you say that like make friend from your envy can you say that friends from your enemies <laughs> friends enemy. of your en so who's the enemies enemy? enemies or who's envy? the enemy here did you yeah, say envy like or en envy or enemy enemy <laughs> 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 I'm too long here, guys. I have all that, you know, like oils and turpentine smell you makes you high. <laughs> Unicorns. Well, there, well, no, so. I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm curious. I'm like, I want to be sure I've got it right. Are you saying make friends of your enemies or make friends with your envy, or is it the same thing? The second version, or probably both. Use it both in one sentence, then it will make sense. <laughs> but well, it reminds I mean, me. Like in general. It reminds well, what you were saying there, Tanya, reminds me of what Inka Essenhai said, who I interviewed a good while ago. She's very successful um, artist, like sells at Sotheby's. And it was one of those kind of summing up things of like, if you could pass on a bit of advice or what's the best bit of advice you could give to another painter. And she said, do what's easy. I thought that's brilliant. Yeah, she said like, brilliant. don't don't go and you know like artists are masochistic in many ways they go and you know if it's not if it doesn't require some bloodletting it's not really good you know she said i've yeah. discovered that the that the um the most successful thing is to do what's easy and it really struck with me it should not be automatic pilots because sometimes when i feel like well this Oh, I've done this a couple of times, then it's time for something new as well. You have to also challenge yeah. yourself, I think. Yeah, but so that's like in a way that's enjoyable though, isn't it? Like challenge is enjoyable yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. and and then, yeah. you know, it, it induces flow state and, you know, ah, yeah. you know it's all it's good. Not and it, and there, it's not a torture. There's, yeah, there's an ease to yeah. that. But this yeah. thing of like, wow, as you say, like I just did this painting, it went really well. And there's this feeling of like, is this any good? <laughs> you know, I, it just went too well. <laughs> that went too um, easy. <laughs> yeah. J just going back to the thing of selling them, it seems to me to kind of miss the point to sort of say, how dare you sell um, AI generated work, particularly from somebody like David, whose work is very similar. Not you, Dave, or not David, Michael. Um, yeah. Michael? Yeah, Michael, whose work, yeah, it, when you put the two of them together, they look very similar. But the thing is, like, the, the inference there is that people are looking at his work in a gallery beside your AI-generated work in a gallery and going, you know what, I think I'm going to go with Francine's AI-generated work. <laughs> it's a complete, yeah. it, it, that which wouldn't, yeah. you know, like, what you're doing won't, won't wouldn't devalue his, what, what uh, like, a traditional painter. You're not even shooting your uh, yourself in your own foot with your own work because people who yeah. want your hand-painted three-dimensional paintings are different to the people who'd want your AI-generated paintings. Yeah. Completely yeah. different, yeah. Yeah, it's not a zero-sum game. There's so much room. But the, there is a lot of fear for AI. The, the, a lot of artists feel threatened by it. So, uh, yeah, that, that must yeah. Uh, mean something. You cannot just like the point say that it's photography. Nonsense. Yes. Or for th photographers. Um, no, I mean, like before oh. when photography was invented, like all yeah, yeah. artists like, oh, you can just, yeah. you know, like yeah. press and then there will be a real image. So yeah, we are still alive. It was like, not real art. It was not considered real art. We're not so art. easy to kill. Um, okay, <laughs> and, let's press on. Actually, Sergio, Sergio yeah. Gomez in Chicago, who's been on the podcast and he's quite a, you know, big figure in the whole art world. I know, he's a curator. I know he's, a, he's an artist. Yes, I know him. Yeah, he's an artist and he's yeah. a curator and he has a gallery and he has his podcast mm -hmm. and he helps artists. He's, you know, he does great work and he's yeah. a very nice fellow. Um, so he says, great topic, John. Thanks, Sergio. Can't wait to hear the conversation. I've been very interested in AI and using it myself. I use DALI 2, in which I start with one of my paintings and have it make four iterations of it using the existing image, style, colors, 
and pixel data found in my artwork, it's fascinating. Anyway, many of the AI players have been under fire recently for scraping copyright images in order to feed its machine learning. It's an interesting topic because Getty Images has put a lawsuit against Sta uh, Stability AI, which is the stable diffusion creators, yeah. uh, for allegedly unlawfully scraping millions of their images. Uh, this That lawsuit's just in the UK. Um, if that is um, Getty Images, one can only assume the same is true for artist works currently online available for grabs. It's a new reality. My question for Francine is to what extent we as artists should be concerned with the generated image from a prompt driven AI that's too close uh, to another artist's work, given the technology is still evolving and heavily depending on scraping data sources? Should artists have the option to opt out? Is that even possible? We expect machine learning will get uh, better over time. Supposedly, Stability AI announced it would allow artists to remove their work from the training data set for an upcoming Stable Diffusion 3.0 release. What do you think of that option? Some things I've seen in, in the past look very uh, close to other artists. Case in point, the image of this um, on this post fooled me. He's talking about the post of, of your, your painting. The image yeah. on this post fooled me to think that I was looking at a painting by Michael Zan, uh, Van Ziel. Uh, if it wasn't for the caption John put on the photo, I would have thought it was his. It looks very close to his style of painting, color scheme, background, brush stroke, even composition-wise. It's very similar in all aspects, not just one. Thanks for jumping on this topic. Um, looking forward to the chat. So that was a lot, Francine, or are you all actually? What what are your responses? <laughs> are you ready to get the question? Because I already uh Well, I he's guess talking about everything. the lawsuit. He's talking about oh, yeah, scraping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The data I set opting out. A, yeah, I think definitely that should be an option as an artist who says I don't feel comfortable being uh, on this list. Yeah, just be able to uh, to opt out your name. Why not? That is, I think, uh, respectful to to the artist, to the art. But I do, I don't think the the artist should feel threatened by it. I I, I keep saying that because um, well, just just show me show me an AI work that uh, really uh, resembles an um, a style of an artist. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, this Michael van Zaal, like <laughs> my own uh, AI work. <laughs> I don't totally don't agree. I think it's it's very different. But uh, yes, the colors are the same. I don't know what to say about it. It's uh, it's a lot of uh, fear uh, with the artist, and uh, I cannot take that away. I, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. Like I am, like um, uh, the the person suddenly who uh, has all the answers to the AI uh, problems. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, I know, also yeah. struggling. We, I, yeah, I'm also just a painter I... <laughs> and just playing with a new toy and uh, having fun with it. Uh, so I don't have all the answers. But yeah, to opt it, out, it felt, I think it felt it, like, um, a good idea. Sorry, say that again? No, the, the, the opting out of, it, of your name, that, that should be an option. Because yes. I, I do believe, I do think it's strange that nobody was asked to be, uh, to be on that list. I never saw the the list with arts. I think probably you can see it somewhere in the in the menu of a Colab notebook. I, I I see all these documents. There is a list I, with names of no, artists. No, um, no, they scrape yeah, the yeah, internet. Yeah. They scrape no, the internet. No, it's like, no, no. There, there's also uh, in Colab notebook you can. Now there look, probably um, is, but when they were making also, the when they're making the data set, that they, yeah, it's, there's exactly. like there's five billion images in that data set. So no, if I, you can be sure five billion people did not give their permission, but yeah. they did by posting it on the internet. Once you post yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but of course, at the moment that you posted your work on the internet, you had no idea that AI was going to be a thing. So, that, so you, right. cannot, uh, you cannot say it's your own fault because you posted it on the internet. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't no, think but so. no, but that's where the that's where it, it's got. It's there's so many images in that data set. It's unreal, you know, like five billion. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. a phenomenal amount. Um, okay. Tanya, did you want to say something there about all of that? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there wasn't a question. <laughs> it was so long, and then it was long. Yeah, there wasn't really a specific question, but this thing about the lawsuits, the scraping, all of that. Do you have anything you want to? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that. I just remember it one. You remember uh, John and David, we were discussing that copying from the photos that people have on Instagram. And I just remember yes. that case that happened probably uh, a few months ago. The, there is um, a photographer, uh, as I understood like from, from this story, and some artists painted exactly the photo of her um i probably you probably see there was an asian girl with a pearl uh, ring or something and this artist just completely used the reference i mean like he just changed probably one you know like a hair or something that was only changes that he had and he won the luxembourg prize you probably heard about that no mm -hmm. so oh. and, no so yeah and and guess who won the the, the case he won. He didn't copy her photo. Although, if you see like two photos, no. it was exactly okay. the same. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, what is saying it to us? You know that you, you like yeah. then AI after that is just you know nothing. I mean, if you still can copy and win yeah. the case, so that is bizarre yeah. because I do uh, know that uh, the whole copyright uh, using photos from the internet and use it. Uh, and almost that is only has to be like a few things the same that it's already that it's forbidden that you're doing something illegal that the, the rules are very strict so i'm really mm -hmm. surprised that you're saying this yeah I, uh, I was following that case yeah. yeah and and just a few months ago she posted that guys you won't believe but i lost <laughs> that case so uh oh, so the, then it's the same as, i'm sorry this yeah, is the photographer the, yeah, a photographer or a model, I'm not sure. I, I, I really forget the details, but I can pin the news. I will find it definitely uh, because I sent it to my friends. But anyway, look at that case, you yeah. know, like, and he copied exactly. So, and we're using images that created from millions of images. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a copy of uh, one image. So that is, yeah, I even, think, yeah. Um, that's why I don't understand all the commotion from this uh, uh, artist who are so worried because the outcome yeah. is always different than their work. And yeah. when we're creating, don't we use same thing like AI? We use some images in our head. We use like something that I, I was in Paris and I saw Sam Chaffran's paintings, you know, like I was so fascinated by the beauty of that <laughs> colors and everything. And probably in my, in my new paintings, you see the colors. But come on, we have like limited palette. <laughs> so we definitely will <laughs> use the same colors. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you get inspired not only with art, but you know, with life, with, with uh, music, with poetry, with uh, photography, with situations. Uh, it's, um, it's allowed to all, get inspired. Yeah, we're not inspired. creating anything new. We just, yeah. you know, like moving the puzzle just creating some some a little bit different images but we're not using anything new we're using the same puzzle so you do have you you have your signature in your paintings i i don't yeah. agree that it's nothing new it's unique you what you make is unique it's recognizable yeah. that this this is a real tanya revilles no one else can make that, that, that yeah but i mean like we're using same colors same medium yeah of course you know like yeah. based on same memories same great yeah. artists and all that that way so, you can compare to ai work i think the way it's created it's also you know inspired by works from others yeah yeah kind of yeah david do you have anything to say about the <laughs> lawsuits um scraping oh. any of that kind of stuff <clears throat> well i think the uh the opt-out option is great that makes sense um i'm not sure sure why anyone would want to opt out though like i i would want i would want to opt in because i would love <laughs> to see what would it, like what what technology can do like in terms of from my images can they create something that i like or that i would paint um that would be amazing <laughs> i will, think will i think just like you know to paint that that is the question. If someone uses your paintings as um, AI yeah. in the outputs, yeah. are you allowed to paint that? <laughs> if That's our, a good question. Well, oh yeah. Well, even if say 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 if say if I opted in, and they um, generated a reference um, from my paintings and then painted it, and 
it was amazing. Okay, like that should just inspire me. I mean, if if I if I actually think that that what came out of that surpassed my work or was equal to it, that would only inspire me to get better. That, that would yeah, be philosophical. <laughs> that would be, that, that would be that would be actually I think that would be amazing. I would love that. <laughs> so yeah. um I mean yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I, I like yeah. that. I mean I, I think kind of like photography raised the standard for reference or for art in general. I think AI will do the same. If we start to use it, look at it as a possible tool, if we want to use it, it will just encourage everyone to up their game. Everyone will become better. Exactly. I don't think humans will ever be cut out of the art process. That's a ridiculous concept yeah. to me. Yeah. So, well, wow, that's yeah. great. I think it's all good. Yeah, all, yeah all it will it will force the the art uh, world to make new uh, to create new art movements. Yeah, you have to come yeah. up with something yeah. new that AI cannot. Yeah, like, even uh, concept like I can I can see how concept artists might lose their jobs or lose some work to AI right now, but. Yeah. Even for them, if they incorporated the AI into their processes, they could go to a whole new level. So I think exactly. it's good for it for everybody. But it's be, you, you know you that it's being like used. Embrace it, evolve, evolve with it. It's been it's being used for so many things. I I didn't even know. Uh, like a chef cook, he's also using AI to make like little adjustments for his recipe. Uh, like choreogra choreographers, uh, they use it to come up. I'm with writing for code dance. for a website. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Using, and they also still call it their own, you know, even if they uh, had a little help from their friend. Yeah, it will yeah. be just just like yeah. a, an cool. extra tool, another tool, like uh, like a camera. You know what I did a few days yeah. ago? It was so much fun. Um, I, uh, so open AI and I gave uh, him, her, I gave it, um, my image and I asked to write a description in, uh, Jerry Zalt's, uh, art critical style. Hi. And it was so cool, guys. Really? It was like Jerry was written, <laughs> wrote that. I told awesome. you. Like his <laughs> style, his words, his chill vibes, you know, that. Oh, and he described my painting. And he said, I'm a genius, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Oh, but you know, th 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 there will be a lot of things that are, are fake. And that, that is the thing that is happening, that many people, they doubt what they see. They think, is it real or is it fake? I think that is yeah. a little bit... The negative side also about this whole development that you have to question yourself every time, you know, even even with the news, you know, the whole uh, deep deep fake, what is it called? You can fake just news. fake everything. You can fake the president. You can fake. Yeah. Uh, you can fake Jerry Sauls. <laughs> yeah. Well, ego stroking wasn't something I thought of before, but that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Funny, funny. Um. Well, just on that, a lot of kids use it to write essays, get yeah, GPT. Yeah, yeah. And there is a thing that um, teachers can download and it can spot AI generated um, writing. Really? So. But, uh, recently, the GPT uh, chat was graduated from an exam. Huh? He passed, oh, really? passed the exam. Even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's but, unbelievable. It will only develop. It's crazy. Uh, this is another question. This is from Anton Reno on Patreon again. Thanks for the tea, Antoine. Uh, thank you, John and Francine, for inviting us to those pioneering practices. I agree with Sergio. The composition idea of this piece is very close to Michael's uh, Van Ziel's. But this has always happened in art, consciously or not. Picasso said, great artists steal. And he stole a lot in a very conscious way. And... Uh, when you look at this piece, you can notice instantly that it's not a painting by Michael, not the same style. But when you've been following Francine's work for years, you can also notice instantly that it doesn't look like her style either. Okay, similar subject, aged woman, and maybe unusual composition, but clearly not her style and brush strokes. So hence my question to Francine, how do you feel about this, about the risk of losing your distinctive style? 
To me, great painters like you achieve a style that builds a distinctive brand in brackets uh, in, in a much stronger way than just the subject they paint or the composition they choose. Yeah. Well, he has, you another, know, he has another question, but we'll answer that one. Yeah, first. yeah, it's too much. <laughs> it's uh, it's two different things. You cannot, uh, yeah, you said it's different than my paintings. Yeah, because it is something different. It's not a painting. Yeah. So I don't, okay. I don't. Never meet. <laughs> I think he maybe doesn't understand uh, how AI works. That he okay. thinks that I is, can it, just uh, paint with it. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Okay. So his his second question, question maybe but, maybe it will. Maybe it'll clarify it a bit. It says, thinking about the joy of creating act. Um, I'm oh, sorry. Thinking about the joy of the creating act. I guess each of us finds energy in a different way. Uh, that can be mm. the serendipitous process between the start and finish, the sensory connection with brush and butterfly and buttery paint, uh, the moments that you get into flow, a bunch of very special bits and pieces that at the end of that the end create an unpredictable emotional connection between an artist and a viewer. As you've experienced both the traditional and AI creative process, can you share with us what the creative joy feels like uh, for each of them? Thanks and congrats uh, for your work. So you have oh, that's very talked generous. about this already, but if there's anything else you wanted to... Yeah, to yeah. Learn. Like I said before, the, the painting process is... Uh, there's much more involved for me at least. Uh, of course, AI, you can make also as many steps uh, as you like. But from, from my, my process in AI is uh, pretty uh, basic still. Um, it's a completely different uh, feeling. Uh, the process is longer. It's more uh, close to me. The, the subject matter, it's or my uh, self-portraits, my family members, or it's uh, models who I'm close to. So I had you know, interesting conversations. So I feel very much connected to the subject. Um, that makes me want to, you know, keep painting on something for, for weeks and weeks sometimes. And with AI, it's it's much fast. It is fast. I cannot say anything else that is much faster. And um, I feel less I feel less connected to AI. But of course, it gives a, a like real uh, exciting feeling when I have an image in my mind or a certain kind of atmosphere and I keep searching for words. Even that can take a long time. Uh, let there be no mistake that it's not like writing a sentence and something nice comes out. Sometimes, you know, I'm all day I'm looking for the right prompt and then end of the day, finally, ah, now we're getting somewhere, you know. And so that is the nice feeling that, um, that, uh, that, that I feel the same sort of almost like connection to my painting as to the AI uh, outcome. That is the best that I feel also that is connected to my, to my paintings. Because I can I, I can make whatever, of course. The, the the options are so wide in AI, the subject matter, what you can do. But I, I, I prefer to stay close to close to myself and close to my work. Yeah. So there's a big difference, sure. Very good. Very good. Okay. That is great. Um I'm gonna wrap it up now. Um Thank you very much for coming, particularly you, Francine, because as soon as those comments started piling in, I thought, oh, wow, this is like, you know, interviewing the witch on the way to the witch burning. You know? <laughs> so how do you how do you feel about getting burned alive? Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But yeah. um, well, no, I was you, happy you, uh, to hear that. It's uh, I thought it was going to be a Twitter space where the people will also be there. And, so, you know, that it will be very uh, close, direct contact and that I will be under attack. So I already yeah. was looking for some bottles of wine. Uh, you said, you said next to me. Uh, I was a bit, I was a bit worried, but I felt very safe with you. And uh, I, yeah, uh, um, I know it's not a personal attack. I keep saying to myself that it's not nothing personal. It's it's just the fear in general. There's a big yeah. anti-AI movement even. I don't know if you saw it on Instagram. There's the whole movement going yeah. on. Well, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. I was yeah. going to say, if, if it was a Twitter space, you wouldn't have been attacked. But if Instagram had spaces, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 Pit, pitchforks and torches. <laughs> <laughs> no, you but know, that uh, is the downside of being a pioneer. And uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, to be uh, so in the beginning of this whole AI Movement. I know, it's, because uh, like um, Stable Diffusion was only released in the middle of last year. Like this is so new. And these court cases, yeah. they're, they're very important. They have to happen because they, we have to, they have to get beyond 
or they have to get clear about what's actually happening because the real kind of issue as far as I in my limited understanding now of the, the, the crunch of these court cases because it's not just that one the Getty image there's another one going on in the California as well I think or San Diego and it's 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 about fair use it's about you know because the the idea is that um you know the big the big data set and it's you know it's basically compositing it's not actually like behind the scenes in the AI it deconstructs all of those images into tiny little pieces and then exactly. it kind of goes through a filter and then it recomposites what it thinks based on the data points, points, not paintings, points, you know. So it is reconstructing something from the ground up. Um, it's not just kind of doing a collage of what it thinks, yeah. you know, it wants. And um, so the, 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 the lawsuits are, are going to clarify whether that's OK or not. And if if they, you know, if Getty Images wins or if the other, you know, people that are that are the class action that's gone on, if they win, that's going to really inhibit AI, the use of AI in art. Um, whereas if they don't win and a precedent is set of like, you know, this is OK, this is just this is fair use, then it'll it will expand, you know, in a good way, I think. But who knows, you know. We're at the yeah, very early better, stages of it. Better to use now before they close it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that quickly makes it a lot Otherwise, you won't be able to use it. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you cannot stop it anymore, the development. And it's not only in art. It's like, you know, in many different fields uh, and doing a lot of good things as well, like curing cancer, maybe. It's a yes, self-learning uh, yes. machine. It's... Uh, no, it's 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 incredible. Let's also emphasize that all the the good things that is happening thanks to AI, really. Yeah. yeah. That it's only yeah. these exactly. artists are so so sensitive creatures. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, and thank all three of you for coming by, joining in the chat. Come back, come back into frame, Tanya, so we can say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you too, John, for the invites. I enjoyed oh, you're welcome. as well. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye, David. Bye. Thank you, Tanya. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Bye. bye. I've never felt this good in my entire life. Make me some spaghetti. Actually, I'd prefer a cup of tea. <laughs> a cup of tea would be lovely. So, yeah, just a little reminder, mainly because... Every second or third person who becomes a patron has got in touch with me and said, you know what, I've been listening to your podcast for ages and I didn't become a patron, not because I don't have the money, not because I don't think it's great, I just didn't get around to it. So this is a little friendly reminder that if you'd like to be a patron, you'd like to buy me a cup of tea, go to patreon.com forward slash John Dalton, gently does it, all one word. Or follow the link in the show notes to become a patron. I would really appreciate it if you could do that, particularly if you've been meaning to and you just haven't got around to it. It would be great. It would mean a lot to me. All right. Thank you. Bye. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle.